Hello everyone and welcome back to our Satisfactory Let's Play. Now at the end of last episode we were over at our nitrogen gas bottling our nitrogen gas and preparing to bring it back here to the base. So today we are going to run up to our drone port up there and set down but I'm going to show you guys what I did in between episodes to sort of uh, the layout for all this. It was quite a bit more complicated since we're going to be uh, bringing tanks of gas in and then sending empty tanks of gas out. So we're going to have it set our drone port up here. We'll bring our uh, full canisters down. Oops. Some power there. Bring our full canisters down here. And I set up a, a production buffer here for our nitrogen gas full canisters. And then they'll run around here and come in here where we're going to unpack them into pipes and we'll have we'll outfeed a pipe here that's going to go down there for one of the things we're going to build and another pipe there that's going to go over there for uh, that'll be actually be our cooling units and I believe this over here will be our frames so and then because it's a closed system this whole packaging and unpacking thing if I'm going to pull a whole container of packaged nitrogen gas and I want to export a container of empty can empty tanks so that's the idea so that's why I put that there and then once we set our unpackagers here we will just send our empties back here and they'll go back up to the drone port and go over there now I want to talk a little bit about these drone ports so the first thing though is we need to put a drone port up top here so we'll get that done and this will be our in feed. And we want to line these up. I think I line these up correctly, but I'm not 100%, but I believe so. And yeah, we'll put it right. Put it right here. Can we get a lift in there? And yeah, we'll put it right there. Okay, so let's see if this all works out right. Not sure the exact dimension. Keep running out of power. Oh, okay. I got my new mouse, by the way, and it's nearly as sensitive. Not quite as sensitive, and I've got the sensitivity turned all the way down. So it's close, but not quite as bad. Okay, easy enough. They did line up. So we got empty canisters going in. Well, they will as soon as we hook it up to power. Okay, so we got our empty canisters going in. We're going to call this... Nitrogen... Gas... And let's call it main base okay so we're going to set a drone down here and then we're going to set this we got empty canisters going in is it filling up the drone maybe hmm They are going in. Yeah, they're filling up the drone right now. Still, it should show something here. I guess the drone could take 900, so let the drone fill up. There we go. Now they should be showing here. There we go. Alright, oh. We need to set this to go over to our nitrogen gas supply. Now we have batteries at our nitrogen gas supply, but I'm going to go ahead, since we have this carousel here, I'm going to go ahead and put another one in here. He should take off as soon as he has his batteries. 
Now here's the thing. So I believe this one drone is going to be able to bring back enough that we are going to be able to do all of our nitrogen gas here at the base off of this one drone. That's how efficient this drone is, really. I think. So I'm basing this off of the empty canister rate that we had took over there when we were running empty canisters over there. Now I want to talk about that a little bit. So our empty canisters is way over there on the ground. And these drones spend a lot of time going up and then down. Now because we're building this drone port so high up, it doesn't have to go up and down. So it's just going to go up a little bit, run straight over to our nitrogen gas. It'll go down over there, pick up our nitrogen gas, come back up, and then come back right here. But because it doesn't have to make the trip up and down here, I believe it's going to cut quite a bit of time off that round trip. So our production, or our rate will actually go up here compared to what it was just running our empty canisters over. Because when we were running our empty canisters over, it was coming over here way up in the air. Then it took forever to go all the way down to our canister thing and then it came all the way back up and it goes up and down really slow and then it takes off and flies really fast horizontally so the vertical up and down is a lot of the time so because this port is so high up in the air it should should and I'll come back up and check this later to see what the throughput is and if we have to we'll just simply put down another port and combine these but that will bring us canisters in here, which we will unpack over here. So we need to set down some pack unpackers. And we're going to put them right in the middle like we always do, two spaces away. So we'll need a splitter. And we're going to want to face that way. Now we want it right in the middle of this block because of the way these packages are set up. Like I said, though, it took me quite a while to actually figure out the layout for all this. And especially with the uh, wing units, because we have water coming in, we have nitrogen gas coming in. The combination of everything and figuring out how to feed it and outfeed it and get it out of storage and everything else took quite a bit of work. Uh, that's going to be five high. Now we'll set down our first packager. This mouse isn't as bad, but it's still kind of bad. And like I said, I've turned the mouse wheel sensitivity down. It is the same type of mouse. I just got a new one because it never used to do this. One, two, three away. And on this side. Two, three, away. Does that hook up? It does. It's tight, but it hooks up. Okay, so we are going to want six of these machines done packaged. Uh, three on this side for one line which will be that line there and then three on this side for another line which will be this line over here and that's that'll be two 600 lines of nitrogen gas back here at the base Hooks up. Okay. 
packages are fairly easy, aren't they? I like kind of the I do here. I guess I put... Oh, actually I screwed up the first one, not the second, third one. See if that's better. Yeah, that's better. Come on. Cooperate with me, game. I'm trying to make a video. Alright, so. I think we'll probably have some gas on it, so I'm going to throw this in here. We want to unpackage gas, not package it. There we go. Come on. By the way, the reason I can tell, see how easy it is just roll up and down here? I mean, it's still a little jerky, but it's it's a lot better than it was with my last mouse. Still don't understand why. Like I said, they're the exact same uh, mice. Okay, so we need some... Actually, let's go ahead and hook up power and get it started. Let's see, they hook up... Every machine hooks up in a weird place. Not sure why they can't be just be uniform, but Gas needs to outfeed. Okay, so I'll just one, two, three away. Okay. Okay. I need a six hundred line. 600 pipe. Oops. Get these normal pipes for these. Ball looks better there. Come on. Ball vertical looks the same, actually. Close enough.
figure out unnecessary hands off over here. And then we needed another light. Come from here. Okay, and like I said, so gas doesn't need pumps. So now we have 600 gas going off in that direction. Now we can underclock this to, because it does 60 a minute and produces 240, you can actually underclock one of these to 50%. It's a little less power. There we go. So 240, 480, 600. And we'll do the same thing over here. Underclock one of these. Now, currently, out of this line, we only actually need 300, so, uh, but that might change in the future. I want this to actually line up, so let's make that line up. But anyway, we're doing uh, 600 out of this line as well, just because in the future we might want it to. Like that's four uh four eyes fine. Not gonna hurt anything. You know what? Let's just And throw under pipes. Okay, and now we have 600 gas going off in that direction. Pretty easy, really. And I'm going to go up and check the throughput on that drone, but I'm pretty sure the one drone is actually bringing back two pipelines worth of gas. That's impressive it really is going a long way towards replacing pipelines but there's one other thing so on these outfeeds here we need to outfeed the empty canisters so we're just going to throw in some mergers oh we want them to come this direction yes This one to go that direction. We want it right there, I believe. Let's just see if that works out. That's a little crooked. Let's move this. Before we went there, then. There. Oh, come on. I guess not. Maybe I had it right the first time. Same thing over here. Want to go this direction. I 
and we want this one to go that direction. Now, we actually only need this to bring back 180 canisters a minute. So as long as the throughput on this drone is 180, you see it takes 60 to get 240. So you're actually getting four gas for each canister. So we only need it to bring back 100 and see 120, 150 is just one 600 pipe. So 300 would be two 600 pipes. We don't actually need two 600 pipes, so I think we are good. We actually are going to need 250, I believe, is what we actually need. So as long as the throughput is 250 or higher, we're good. Let it land, do its thing before we check it. We not have empty canisters coming in, also. We should. Sorry, let me check this out. Is that empty? Wow, okay, that's empty. Transfer rate 264, so we're good. So actually, 264 items per minute, that's that's almost 1,200. It's 1,900 and some gas, or no. Yeah, 1,900 and some gas, I believe. So we are good on throughput for just one drone, bringing back enough for to supply our entire base of nitrogen gas. I love these drones. Uh, for package gas, I mean, if that was just like bauxite, that wouldn't be so great. We'd need to set up several drone ports. But for this package gas, considering each packaged gas is actually four units of gas, makes this wonderful. As long as they don't go screwing with the recipes or whatever. Okay. So that's our unpackaged nitrogen gas. So that was fairly easy, quick and easy. And we are going to do cooling units next, which I believe is going to be down here. Yeah, we got heat sinks and rubber coming in here. We got cooling units coming back out. They'll go down there. And we have our nitrogen gas coming in. Now, these are blenders. So we are going to want 7 high and 9 high for our splitters. You know, I don't know. Let me check here. With the blender. Okay. I don't know if I'll be able to do this right, but let's try. Should be right against. That should be three away. Don't quote me on that. We might have to move that, but. I needed to know where we're going to put these. So let me get this first one lined up. Five splitters. Right in the middle. It's nine. Seven eye. Let's see how this looks. Did 
those, it connects. That's excellent. Okay, that works out. That's one blender. So we're going to do four blenders. Now we need to offset this side, I believe. Because we want these to line up. That's going to be hard, but let's do this from this direction. See, we actually want those to line up. It's right against. One, two... See if those line up. See if these connect. They do. Okay. Okay, now these are going to make our fuse, no, our cooling systems. We could have went with this, I, I considered going this route. It uses a, a little bit less nitrogen and gas and motors instead of water. But uh, we're going to be using motors for turbo motors, so instead of using them for this, I want to go ahead and use the rubber, which we already set up, and the heat sinks, which we already set up. So. This, this recipe also uses a lot more heat sinks. So I would have had to set up more machines for heat sinks that way. So we're going with our stock recipe. And I already brought the water up anyway, so why not? to put down here. I put the splitters above the pipes for a reason. I'm hoping it all works out. These are the first blenders I've ever put in. Seven iron here. Okay. Okay. Six. Buried myself there for a second. Do this one this said. Eight. Six. Yeah, that's the easy part then. So, that water has to come in, and this nitrogen gas has to both have to come in. So, that water is, I think it looks like it's, uh, actually, let's just figure it out. You need to be this long. Hover pack makes this easier. What if I had power over here? Let's just run power real quick so I can fly around and do, see what I'm doing. Where are the power hookups on the blender here? 
Oh, we don't care. I'm just going to put one here. One there. Looks like they're in the back over here. Put one to there. And another one. Yeah, good enough. Okay, right, back to water. Four eyes at the right height? I think it is. Let's see. This needs to be, they both need to be 600 lines. And of course it doesn't reach. Okay. Put one in that we're going to have to take out anyway. Now, let's hope this works. I think it will. Yes, yeah, so and that said. what I was afraid of. Looks like it's gonna work though. Okay, that is nitrogen gas. I set the recipes for these, yes I did. Okay, so far so good. Now what we're gonna do is delete these. There used to be a sort of bug where if you had a section of pipe divided by pipe stacks that it wouldn't work. It would, but it wouldn't flow through right. And I just got into the habit of deleting one of those, and I just never stopped. So I know I don't really need to do that. I just can't help it. The habit. All right, now this one's going to be three high. This is our water input. Uh, we want it. Coming in there. Want it too bad. There we go. I don't know what is going on with this. But whatever. It's where this needs to be now. We'll go to here. There. Okay. Water in this one. Water in this one. And then we'll need water in this one. Okay. 
So I have come to the conclusion, by the way, that I don't like blunders. Which they've never introduced them. <laughs> I just... They're annoying, they're a pain. And they take an enormous amount of power. Which... I'm not going to do that. That could be a two, this can be a one. No, I don't want there either, I want here. There we go. Anyway, these take... 75 megawatts, so this, these four machines, it's uh, 300 megawatts. That's a lot of power. And then I'll delete the unnecessary stuff here. Okay. Everything hooked up. Everything running. Green lights all around. The yellow light down here. What's that? Over? It's not getting rubber. Ah, that would make sense. Oh, we got a green light. Okay. Put some mergers in here. That's going to be an issue I didn't think about. Just all your keys. It's working. I don't know what it's trying to connect to at an angle there. It's weird. I don't even... know what's over here. There's two pipes over here, but... Why is it trying to connect to this? Doesn't make any sense. Will this reach? It will. Awesome. Uh, 
And that's cooling units, guys. Complicated mess, but that's cooling units. So that's producing just 24 cooling units a minute. Now, I think that's all we need, at least initially. So we're good right now. Next up is the fused modular frame. So cooling units here come out here come around here and then go into our production buffer go down to our storage throw this wall up here real quick I am going to order another yet another mouse that uh, is a different brand than the one I have to see if I can get the mouse wheel even more sensitive down here is where we were packing I forgot to put the walls up here And then down here is where we are going to make fused modular frames. So we got our nitrogen gas, and I brought our aluminum casings and our heavy modular frames all in over here. I did run power, so all we have to do is put, again, put down four blenders. Now, we have to try and make this work all, all over again. Get everything to line up. These are these are as bad or even worse than manufacturers, honestly. Okay, so we put the splitters right in the middle. That should be right against. One. No, that should be right against. So one, two, three of them. We'll see. Let's see if it hooks up. It does. God, I'm good, right? Again, we want another blender right here beside it. And then this one over here. These lined up. right against one two three of it deal. Same thing over here. Getting ever closer to nuclear. We're getting very close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine.
You still need to go around and get all the uranium in the world. We'll be doing that soon. Make sure these hook up. So after this, all we have is turbo motors to automate here. Then it's going to be all about getting nuclear set up. Actually connected everything right just now. No. Second time we do this, we're getting a little better at it, I guess. It's pretty much a mirror setup. Except this time we don't have water. These, by the way, use modular frames. These only take 37.5, so that's uh, if it's 40, it'd be 100 or 160. So it's only about 150 gas. So it's half, <coughs> it's half of the pipeline. Excuse me. So we should be good though. Here. So let's set all these. It's only making 1.5, so there's it's only we're going to be making six of these a minute. That's a lot of power to make six units a minute. So, I mean, I just can't help myself. Because we used to have to do that, now I can't help myself with doing it. Okay. Remember, they connect to the back of the machine. Okay, and there's our fuse modular frames. Run them downstairs.
Get in the middle here. That direction. Oops. More lips. Use modular frames are done. Now, we're only getting, like I said, six of these a minute total. So, we're going to have some time to wait before we can do our unlock. So, what I'm thinking, let's go back down to the hub. I'll button this up, go down to the hub, and I'll show you what I'm thinking. Okay. Make sure, so yes, we have fuse modular frames and pulling it, it's both coming in down here. Slowly but surely. Set our next milestone over here. So we just need 50 modular frames. I, I'll grab these, and we'll be able to make turbo boners, minor mark threes, and these thermal propulsion rockets. Now, speaking of these thermal propulsion rockets, I right now we have a surplus of power, and we won't once we start building the manufacturing to make fuel rods for nuclear. So, while I have a power surplus before we dip into our power battery backups, I want to get as many of these temporary. So I'm going to set up a temporary setup for these spaceship parts, and I want to get as many of the initial steps built as possible. So it'll make more sense once I explain it. But uh, we have this area right down here. It's pretty open and clear. So I'm going to set up temporary production down there off in that direction and making these space elevator parts. And I'm doing that because, well, it's right here by their all of our things so I can just set down some storage containers down there grab what I need out of here and put them in there so I'm gonna go ahead and do that guys and I'll uh, when I get it done I'll show you the whole thing and then we will unlock our turbo motors so I'm gonna select that milestone one here alright guys I will see you soon okay guys here we are we've got as much as this temporary setup down here made as we can so I'll show you here, we got uh, versatile frameworks being made here, which leads to our magnetic field generators which made here. And that's uh, my output here, so we'll need a thousand magnetic field generators. Then over here, we've got our smart plating being turned into modular engines which right now we're just storing out here because we haven't unlocked the next step yet and the next step is going to take a lot of a lot of high-end materials so it's going to be a while before we get there and then on this step we have 
automated wiring being made, which is feeding into here, which is going to make our adaptive control units, which is being fed into here, which will make our assembly director systems. So we have two of the parts that we can make fully at this point, and then this one we'll be able to set up after our next unlock. And then with our final unlock, we can start making nuclear pasta, which takes, I think, copper dust and just, I can't remember what else. It's copper dust and maybe use modular frames or something like that. I can't remember. They're made in a particle accelerator and we don't even have that yet, so. Uh, we got two of our four that we can complete. One that's mostly complete, just has one step left, and then we have the final step. But uh, I wanted to do all this and get at least this initial stuff done while we have the power to do it. So I want to get this done, get it out of the way, so we can disconnect all this and we'll have this power available to build our nuclear plant once we get to that step. So I just wanted to let you know what we were doing here. And then we'll go back upstairs and we'll get our milestone unlocked so that next episode we can uh, start working on turbo motors. So, fuse modular frames, supercomputers, and steel pipes. And uh, why don't you guys hit that like button for me while I'm hitting this. So, don't forget to leave that like. Okay. Milestone reached. Turbo motors can now be constructed in order to build the latest Fixit improved factory buildings, such as the Miner Mark III. A new project part enables progress to the next phase. Getting those turbo motors is going to be a high priority so that we can uh, upgrade all of our miners and get better production going. So that'll be that. And then in the next episode, we'll get turbo motors going, guys. So I'll see you soon. Hey, guys, before we end the episode, let's see how many people we can get to click that subscribe button. Right there in the middle of the screen where it's flashing. Hey, good job. There's one. And another. Hey, you guys are getting it. All right, that's enough of that. I'm not greedy. I want to thank you guys for watching the episode, and I will see you in the next video.